Hello, my name's Tom and this is Proper Honest Tech. The summer is, sadly, drawing to a close and that means students are returning to the classrooms and lecture halls and workers are returning to the offices. With that in mind, I thought I'd make a video where I talk about a few iPhone apps that I've recently discovered which I think have the potential to help you out, whether you're at school, university or at work. Now, just to be clear, these aren't necessarily all new apps, but they are all apps that I've recently discovered. I'll include timestamps in the description so you can jump to the different apps if you wish, but with that said, let's get on with the video. The first app is called Life AR by TeamViewer, with the AR of course standing for Augmented Reality. Essentially, the app is a video calling and screen recording app, but with the twist being that you can also implement augmented reality into those calls and videos. So, for example, I often get used as the family tech support guy. My dad, in particular, often calls me asking for help with how to plug certain things in or what button he needs to press on a device. If this is on the computer, we can jump on a regular screen sharing call and I can show him, but if it involves maybe connecting something to the back of the TV or configuring something on his printer, this all gets a bit more difficult. Life AR means you can video call that person, and during the call, both parties can add things onto the screen in augmented reality. So I could drop an arrow, maybe a thumbs up on the correct remote control button to press, for example. And on the flip side, my fiancé and I are moving house in a couple of weeks, and I'm definitely going to be hitting my dad up for DIY help. With Life AR, he can show me the kind of things that he'd be able to show me in person, even though we'll be about 100 miles apart from one another you can have up to six people on a call if you need to. It works for videos too, so if you find yourself constantly having to show a process over and over again, maybe you could just record the process using both your phone camera and the AR annotations and save the video on your company SharePoint. If you're a student, you could use this in lectures or in practical sessions to take super detailed video notes of what you're learning. It's a pretty amazing app, and at the time of making this video, it's free to both download and use, so I definitely recommend checking it out. The second app that I want to show you is called Otter, and it's described by the guys who make it as the place where conversations live. Essentially, Otter is an ultra-intelligent dictation and transcription app, and this is useful when you consider how dictation typically works with other apps. For example, I think Siri dictation is pretty good, but if I wanted to record a few paragraphs of text there, I'd have to say things like comma and full stop and new line or new paragraph if I wanted the text to come out in any kind of cohesive manner. Otter uses artificial intelligence to not only understand the words that you're saying, but also to add in things like punctuation and remove the usual ums and pauses that would otherwise make transcription really difficult. Essentially, it works really well in real-world settings, like perhaps recording a lecture or some random thoughts that you've had which you want to keep a track of. But it can also differentiate between different voices, and you can assign a person to each of those voices, which means this is a perfect tool for perhaps recording a team meeting or a podcast where multiple people are going to be speaking. And not only that, but because the audio file is saved at the same time, you can then go back to the transcription either on your device or via the web portal and click on words in the transcription to immediately begin playing the audio from that particular point. The app can be downloaded for free and used for free with access to the majority of the core functionality of the app. If you need access to some of the more advanced features, like advanced searching, Zoom integration for the recording of virtual meetings, etc., then there are paid plans for individuals, students, and enterprise that you can take advantage of. The third app I want to show you is called MyMind. Now, for transparency, this app is free for a trial period, and then after that, you're looking at a cost of $10 per month if you want to keep using it. But I think that for many people, that's a really fair price when you see how powerful this is. My mind is essentially your digital brain. Now, that in itself is not a new concept. I was using Evernote in that way for years until I left the platform. I use Apple Notes like this a little bit. But where all of these apps are let down is by the amount of time you have to invest in tagging things once you've added them. Your real brain doesn't work like that. You just remember something. Well, my mind is pretty similar to this, thanks to artificial intelligence. Now, you can add obvious stuff to my mind, like tweets or bookmarks or emails, and my mind will extract data from them to help you find things more intelligently later on. But where I think the AI really gets clever is when you start to take photos of things and add stuff in that way. 
The AI is exceptionally good at both recognizing what you're taking a photo of, but also of taking notes of things like the colors of the item or the material that the item is made out of. So maybe you're researching for a project and you want to head out on a research trip and take pictures of things that inspire you. My mind will help you to organize those ideas. Maybe you're a designer or a student working on a paper. The options for how you might use this are pretty limitless. And for once, my mind market themselves based on what they don't do rather than on what they do. There's no folders function or collections function, just one giant place to store everything. There are no social features or collaboration tools and the fact that it's a paid service means no ads, no tracking and no selling on of your data. It's a pretty amazing app and definitely one I think you should consider checking out. If you want an app that's kind of similar to my mind but at only about a tenth of the price, you could do worse than checking out Magpie. I guess it's called Magpie because magpies are known to be attracted to shiny things and this is a visual list app. In fact, the makers of the app describe it as the love child of Apple Photos and Apple Notes. And I would definitely say that if you're studying in a visual field like design or if you work in that kind of role where you need to be able to quickly track visual things that inspire you, this app could be right up your street. Essentially, you can either take photos using your camera or add in photos or screenshots, storing them in a database. You can then separate them off into albums or collections, and for each image, you can store a bunch of useful information like web URLs, physical locations, notes, and even prices. You can add people to lists if you want to collaborate on something, and you can export lists out to all of the usual third-party tools. It's a great app for anyone who wants to keep a track of places to visit or things to buy, but could also have its usage cases in education or in business, helping you with projects or assignments. You get a seven-day free trial when you sign up to the app, and then from that point on, it's £1.29 a month or a £12.99 lifetime fee, obviously converted to whatever your equivalent currency might be. Okay, the last app I'm going to talk about today has been around for quite a while now, but I'm including it in the list anyway as I think it's super valuable, and that app is Toggle. Toggle is a time tracking app, allowing you to quickly and easily track your time, giving you a visual representation of what you spend your day at work doing. You can manually track your time, which is what I do, by using the iPhone app and hitting the start timer button each time that I begin working on a project. I then amend the timer depending on what I'm working on so I can see at the end of each week how much time I've spent on client work, how much time I've spent on YouTube work, how much time I've spent on freelancing work, etc. Or you can use automatic background tracking where the app will recognize anything that you're using for 10 seconds or more and automatically track what you're doing. It's a common saying that time is money and that's very true for most of us. Time is, after all, the most precious commodity that we all have access to, so it can be really valuable to know what it is that you're spending your time working on. You can do this by adding in features like billable hours if you're working on a project for a client and it even has a Pomodoro function, allowing you to work in chunks of 25-minute activity bursts, which it's believed is a great way of keeping you as productive as possible. There is a free version of the app that gives you access to the core functions, but there is also a paid version and an enterprise version if that's what you need. So there you go, five apps that I think will help you to achieve maximum productivity, whether you're a student heading off to college or someone heading into the office. What do you think? Are there apps that you've recently discovered that you think I should be including in a future video? Drop me a comment and let me know. I'd love to know what you're using at the moment. And as ever, if you found this video useful, do please consider leaving me a like and subscribing to the channel for more content like this in the future. See you on the next video.